From the first post, obviously the sunburn has dissipated. Could be a couple days, could be a month later. We already see that the problem area is his crown. Let's check out what the other image is. And just to say this real quick, this guy, right? You becoming older, as you age, your body ages, your follicles age, and the number of antigen cycles decreases over time. So and we can clearly see that, you know, his scalp is over here, but this is just a hair whirl, right? Um, you're going to see scalp. Hey guys, before we continue this video, I would like to mention that we now have liposomal monoxidal sulfate on my website, fologens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com, and if the order queue is available and open, you can order it there. We're running it as a cosmetic. There are other sort of botanicals inside of this particular topical that are pretty helpful when it comes to conditioning the hair. So that's at fologens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z dot com. That's F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z dot com. Go check it out and maybe even try it out. See you there. Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another hair progress review video. And we're back on the Tressless Hair Loss subreddit. One of the largest subreddits in the world and maybe forums in the world that has to deal with hair loss. So we're looking at this particular user by the name of Hey It's Us 449 and we're going to check out his progress. So the title of his post is quote 3 months on 1 by 3 fin slash min and I believe the progression is positive unquote. Now I don't know what he means by 1 by 3 this weird ratio. Maybe it's I guess 1 milligram finasteride I I, I don't know. I don't know what this convention means. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comment section, but we'll figure it out later on in the video. So he writes in the description of his post, quote, 52 year old male noticed some thinning while on vacation in April, but hoped it was just wet hair and sunshine started the oral meds on July 1st. I guess it's 2025. And I'm very pleased. There's a definite change, unquote. So let's have a look at his progress pictures. So right off the bat, um, guys, if you're thinning on your scalp, you have to be very careful when you go outside. Why? Because you have this flaming ball of fire in the sky called the sun, and it can do crazy things like cause sunburn. And if you get sunburn on your scalp, you're going to get shedding issues and you're possibly going to, you know, just have very poor scalp health because of the UV rays, right? If you have fair or sensitive skin, you're going to cause those issues. And that sort of inflammation can pretty much cause your whole scalp to shed. So be careful and wear a UPF hat and take care. Don't let this happen to your scalp. This guy's scalp is super, super red. And just think about it. It's your head. It's the top of your head. So it's, you know, getting beat by UV rays almost every time you're outside. I don't know if you can somehow get sunscreen on your scalp, but if you don't have a hat and if the UV index is really high, you might have to consider doing something like that. You don't want to mess with your scalp health. And a lot of people get skin cancer this way um, on top of their head, right? Again, because that is the primary area where the UV rays are beating down all day. So be careful, don't risk it. Um, this really shouldn't be happening. But in any case, we can clearly see that his crown, it just looks inflamed. Maybe he was outside for multiple days on his vacation, which caused this issue. Um, but realistically, he's probably had this sort of thin spot on his crown for quite a while. So this is his baseline at month zero. So let's go back to the post. So already, you know, maybe this is another day or a month later, who knows. But you can see that there's no real inflammation so from the first post obviously the sunburn has dissipated could be a couple days could be a month later we already see that the problem area is his crown let's check out what the other image is and just to say this real quick this guy started to see hair loss around his 50s so he has some pretty strong hair genetics because many of us we encounter this issue when we're in our teens you know the the most unfortunate of us, typically people encounter this issue when they're in their mid to late 20s. And this guy got away with it up until his 50s. So 
he might just have a very, very high threshold for his DHT sensitivity when it comes to his hair follicles, or for whatever reason, maybe those genes just turned on when he was 52. Now, there is another aspect of alopecia that doesn't necessarily have to be androgenetic, simply has to do with your age, right? You becoming older, as you age, your body ages, your follicles age, and the number of antigen cycles decreases over time. So that could be a factor here, but usually in those cases, they would use something like oral minoxidil to extend those antigen phases, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to get on finasteride. However, it could possibly help. So, you know, let's check out the other images. So this is the second picture in the camera roll, and you can see the crown is the primary problem area, and let's go to the third picture. So this is his scalp wet, obviously, you can tell. And yep, still it's the crown that's the issue. Now, I don't know what month this is. Maybe this is still month one. I really wish these guys would label that. Uh, let's go on to the next picture. And yeah, as you can see, this is the fourth picture, I would say, in the camera roll. So comparing this to the baseline, we can clearly see that the crown has increased in its density. If we go to the second picture in the camera roll, right, this photo over here, um, we can't really, you know, I mean, he has some good coverage, right? But you can still see the scalp. And that could be due to lighting too, to be fair, right? So this most recent photo that we're on, maybe the lighting isn't hitting it just right, but you can tell that the density has picked up in the crown area, right? You can see some, like, some faint, you know, peach-colored thing going on, which is his skin, but in reality, he's responding to treatment very well. And let's go to the last picture in the camera roll, and yeah, I mean, for the most part, he has recovered his crown. So, not much to say there, to be honest with you. Um, now this isn't the exact angle as this photo over here, right? So, mm, maybe you can argue that, okay, maybe we're not getting the exact comparison. And we can clearly see that, you know, his scalp is over here, but this is just a hair whirl, right? Um, you're going to see scalp in a hair, in a hair whirl, um, especially depending on how you comb your hair. But for the most part, obviously this guy has made a substantial improvement from his baseline up until his current picture right now. So congrats to him, and he's made the progress very well. Now let's have a look at the comment section. Maybe we can get some more insights. So um, people are congratulating him, saying that this is just three months. Unbelievable. Congrats. Amazing results. I started with... 2.5 milligram per day. I don't know if that's necessary. 2.5 milligrams per day of finasteride. Guys, anything above one milligram is essentially the same when it comes to suppressing scalp DHT and serum DHT. It's only with dutasteride that maybe you get more of a benefit as you go past 0.5 milligram dutasteride, but that's not the case once you go past one milligram finasteride. Um, somebody else responds essentially what what I'm saying by saying one milligram finasteride per day should be sufficient. Um, oh, we have another picture over here from the user. And somebody says, quote, dude is 52 but reversed his gray color, question <laughs> mark. And hey, it's us, 4449 responds, no age reduction, still old, still gray, not as bald though. Cool face emoji. And um, let's have a good look. Yeah, I mean, he made a great result. He made it, he made some great progress, right? We can barely see the crown. Obviously, his density's up. Maybe you can say it's, oh, he's combing it in a strategic way. Yeah, but in order to get this sort of coverage, you need to have, you need to have made some progress, right? So this is just, um, you know, a really good picture. And again, you can see this, right? It's sort of hair whirl, his hair whirl, and is uh, just spiraling out. 
you can uh, definitely get a sense of the density of his scalp, sort of revitalizing. And I don't think there's much to say, but yeah. Oh, and um, <laughs> it looks like somebody else is saying what I said earlier, right? Uh, this particular user says, quote, Wow, you had a serious sunburn on your scalp while on holiday. And did you really just notice it on holiday? It looks like a fairly advanced hair loss. There is certainly an improvement now, although lighting is very different in the later pictures. Stay the course and you are likely to see further gains, unquote. Um, and another person over here says, quote, This is something that people who use tretinoin need to be aware of. Tretinoin increases photosensitivity. Okay, I'm going to stop reading there. Yes, this is true, and I've said this many times in my video, in my videos. If you're going to use tretinoin on your scalp, you're increasing your skin sensitivity. So if you go outside the day, so let's say you put it on the night, and then at night, and then... Blah, blah, blah. Let's say you put it on at night, and then the next morning comes and you go outside you still have skin sensitivity issues that you have to be made aware of. And depending on the concentration of tretinoin you use, or the type of retinoid you use, you may, let's say you use tezorotene, for example, right? You're going to increase that photosensitivity even more. And that increases the chance of having a sunburn on your scalp. You can see other people in the comment section saying, you should wear a hat on the beach or you will have more problems than your hair loss. Skin, can skin cancer is no joke, especially when you are 50 plus, And this is true. Very true. Um, and also now we finally get an understanding on what he possibly meant by his, you know, his little ratio up here. It looks like it's one milligram finasteride, three milligram oral minoxidil. So it looks like it might have been a sort of two-in-one kind of medication. In any case, congratulations to this guy. Um, you know, good on him for getting on treatment. Uh, he's very lucky to have held onto his hair for this long in his life, and all we can do is give him congratulations. But guys, I have to say this. I started my own company, and we are selling liposomal minoxidil sulfate. So if you're interested in trying a new hair serum, try Sulfagens. This is the liposomal minoxyl sulfate brand that we have started. We have it at a 10% concentration and a 5% concentration. And at the time of recording this video, it is still in stock. We have 268 in stock right now out of 300 for the 10%. And I think 295 out of 300 for the 5%. So I hope you guys go check it out. It's going to be in the description below. And yeah, check it out, maybe even try it out. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.